Paul Somerville with Electric Scooter Guide, and today we're joined by Michael Shaw from NAMI, the company behind the Burn E, also known as the NAMI Viper during its development. It's probably the most talked about scooter in the world right now, and for good reason. I, I don't think anybody's ever seen another scooter like this. I'm so grateful to have you here with us today. Michael, I know you're super busy launching your new scooter. How's the release going for you? Uh, everything's fine. Thank you for having me here. And uh, I know it's pretty late for your time, for your work. And uh, about the releasing of the scooter, everything is going all well. Uh, quite a lot of countries have received uh, samples or production. And uh, a lot of the customers have ridden them for quite a distance. Everything is all right, besides some small issues like fenders mm -hmm. and uh, like uh, small other things, like dashboard not being so super bright. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything is all right right now. Great. I know you've been developing this in, in, and people have been following you for, for a while now. How long ago did you start NAMI? Uh, about one year, 12 months ago. Uh, I know during the development of the scooter, the Bernie was codenamed Viper. Why did you change the name of the scooter? Uh, Viper have, Viper comes out when we develop a scooter and uh, the scooter does look like a snake mm -hmm. because it's a tubular frame and uh, so we call it Viper. But in the end of the day, the Viper has some trademark issue, potential trademark issue sure. with the car and with the things like this. So we decided it's better to change the name. That's a major reason. You've already answered my next question, which is it sounds like the, the scooter is going to be available pretty much worldwide. Yes. Yeah. What countries do you expect will be the, the main markets for the, for the Burn E? The main market will be European and uh, USA, North American, mm -hmm. and the Australian countries like this. And when, when you were getting, when you first had the idea to, to make a scooter of your own, did you know right away that it was going to be, uh, that you wanted to build an ultra high performance scooter? No, at the beginning we have changed few steps in terms of developing. At the beginning I was trying to build a 10 inch, well, uh, do motor scooters at the beginning. And uh, during the process everything come to an end that like we need a high power scooter to march on the other component that was uh, relatively high end, relatively high cost. So we decided to jump uh, into a bigger size, bigger motor, bigger controller, everything like this. Uh, it's a process of nature in the end of the day, mm -hmm. what I recall. Uh, but the major reason is uh, the component we choose and uh, at the end of the day, we need to match the power, match the value into it. So we decided to change it from 10 inch to 11 inch. Mm, okay. And were there, were there many distinct prototypes along the way, or was it sort of a one continuous evolution of the design? Uh, first, I have no engineer background at all before I start all of this. Hmm. I was sales in the Kabul for about one year. Mm -hmm. And uh, before that, I have no engineer background. I studied economy in the college. Oh, wow. So when I, was, <laughs> when I decided to make the scooter, I have no idea at all, but I want to build mm -hmm. something worth welding with the two because I used to ride a lot of mountain bikes. I do feel it's more secure when the frame is welded rather than bolted together. That's my main goal to do this. But I, at the beginning, we do not have any idea to do it. When I say we, I mean myself and the part-time designer I hired. I hired a part-time designer. He had a full day job in the daytime. And uh, every night I go to his apartment, like after six o'clock in uh, China, and uh, we sit together for like three or four hours. And he draw the scooters based on my idea. And uh, we start process like this. A lot of things goes to quite messy initially, mm -hmm. because the thing we draw, the thing we decide, cannot literally be produced. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of setbacks. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. I had no idea. I think, I think I and maybe many other people assumed that you were an engineer just because of the sort of the level of attention and detail that they could see you pouring into this. But uh, it sounds like you've been passionate about bicycles for a long time and, and scooters as well, though. So that makes sense that that you would, uh, you know, have come up with the core idea behind this. Do you have a team of engineers at this point? At this point, yes, we have a guy sitting with me together in the office. Mm -hmm. We are developing the other models, the new models. We have a team about twenty members right now in the NAMI China, mm -hmm. and uh, we have 
I have all, my own machine for everything. I do the welding myself. I do the CNC machining for every part myself. Mm -hmm. I do the turning machine for myself. I do assembling myself. And uh, everything is in one building. And uh, during the process, uh, when I first started like one year ago, I think it as a very simple thing. I was imagining I could find all sort of the supplier for every part, every component. And I just purchased from them and I could just get a place assembling them. And uh, that's all, that's my initial idea or initial thinking about how the business could be. During the process, a lot happened. Uh, a lot of supply, supplier or parts manufacturer, they lo lose patience with me. They lose confidence with me. And uh, I have a lot of change during the process. And they are not going to do the another thing another time mm -hmm. for me for the samples. So I end up buying a lot of machines. Well, it is kind of amazing. It, it's in the end, you've ended up with a huge differentiator, uh, you know, building your own frame and, and, uh, and this interface that you've come up with. Um, I think it make it and, you know, the stem design, I mean, all of these things uh, and more. Yes, at the beginning, I want to make some, something different. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is my, this is my first time to do business, to do my own business. So uh, I think I better do it different and do it uh, do yeah. the best I can. And I noticed um, in some of the pictures online, there were some, some tubing with uh, little X's in the middle of it. Is that the frame tubing or was that something that you were looking at for a stem earlier? Side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's the main tube we use. Mm -hmm. I open an uh, exclusion tooling for that tube. Mm -hmm. I think that will reinforce the frame. However, I, we think the frame is quite good for it. So the, in the end of the day, the bung Yi is a little bit overbuilt in mm. terms of the strings and everything. I do believe that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, initially, I think the bung Yi could be a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. But when we got the first sample workout, it's like 47 kilos. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's a little bit heavier than I expected. We have the prototypers. A frame in my office right now. We have a few different frames. One of them is only 3.8 kilos mm. at the initial review. Mm -hmm. Right now, the frame is like 5.8 kilos. Mm. I mean, mm -hmm. the only frame. So see. the thing builds up a little bit. The swing arms are they um, are they forged or are they cast aluminum? They are forged. Nice. I, I love the shocks that you have on there. It's one of the um, one of very few scooters in the world that have they have an adjustable shock. Um, what made you decide on the particular? I think it's a KKE adjustable shock that's on there. Yes, yes. Like I said, I used to ride uh, quite a lot of mountain bikes, mm -hmm. and uh, I do feel the damping is quite important and uh, quite a good feature to a scooter or to a two wheel vehicles. So at the beginning, I contact the Taiwanese company called. E and N. I actually got samples from them, like dozens of samples and doing some testing. Uh, like you might know, in 2020, there's a very busy year for the bicycle business. So they told me that they need like 12 months to produ produce a batch for me. Mm. Then that's uh, not quite a good thing for me. And also, they are not so customized for the internal damping force and everything like this. Mm -hmm. And by the time, uh, one of my supplier, actually, back then, one of my supplier introduced this Kaikai to me. Kaikai is actually the the shock supplier for the Shorong light beam and Shorong stove beam. They are making the uh, shocks for Shorong right now. And uh, I go them, go to them, bring my scooter prototype, and uh, they check the damping with me together. They customize the internal structure of their shocks, and to make it have more damping than it originally have, and uh, the relationship starts. Fantastic. I'm really looking forward to it. As a motor former motorcycle racer, uh, suspension was like just one of the most important things to me, and I'm just very excited about uh, the idea of having something with uh, with re some real oil damping and with the ability to uh, to adjust it. The the stem latch is um, is really unique. And then um, when it is when the stem is folded down, though, does it latch to the deck or is it sort of folds and, and sits there? It's just sort of folded and sits there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it's not really. It's too big to be carried by the stem, so it's not really yes. as useful to yes. have something that latches down. Yeah, it's, it's actually quite 
easy to carry it mm-hmm. because you have a triple frame and uh, you always get a place to hold your scooter by your hand. Julian at Fluid Freeroad was telling me that uh, that it's yeah it's actually much much easier to pick up than like the Wolf uh, the Wolf Warrior on the other hand is like on the opposite end of the spectrum where it's a very um, you know awkward sort of lift. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So that's that's great. On the motor controllers, are you making your own uh, an exclusive design to the Bernie? Yes, it's a kind of exclusive design mm-hmm. because uh, I had this idea which I right now achieved. I remember back like. But one year ago, I was talking with Julian from Free Light. I was discussing with him about the idea to set the motor differently and have the riding modes differently. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I went to my controller supplier and asked them if this is achievable. And, uh, they told me, yes, but it don't take a lot of time and it works. Mm-hmm. And then I found my dashboard supplier, mm. the company that make me the dashboard, and I asked them if it is possible, and they told me yes, but it takes a lot of time, and uh, and uh, then we started. It's a very long process, and uh, and uh, back then, I have no team to do it, so I'm the only one who is riding the scooter and uh, trying to find out the issues. I have done a lot of controllers back then. I'll bet. I'm so impressed with the final result. I mean, it really is like an industry leading um, interface that you've come out with. The fact that you've got uh, it's both customizable, but you can also switch from mode to mode very easily. Because I've, you know, I've definitely ridden scooters where you could get a lot of different modes out of them, but you were digging really deep. And then if you wanted to change from one to the other, you had to write everything down. And so that, in combination with the fact that you can control the amount of power from each motor uh, separately in the presets, pretty amazing and something I'm really look, looking forward to experiencing when we ride it. Yes, I uh, personally, I feel the front motor is not really need 100% power, mm-hmm. like the rear motor, in any two wheels. So I do think it could help. And uh, then I start uh, developing and uh, start doing a lot of writing and things like this. How are the motor controllers cooled? Are there um, fans or directly air cooled? They are attached to the frame. Mm-hmm. They are they are a few screw attached to the controller to the base of the frame. Mm-hmm. The whole frame acts like a heat sink, and uh, the air flow directly to the controller is actually cooled down quite easy. Uh, I did some testing yesterday for some new parts, some new component. Mm-hmm. And uh, the weather here is like 30 degree. And uh, normally the place I go to do testing is a very steep hill, steep mountain here, somewhere around here. And the controller goes up to like uh, 16, 2 degree and uh, stop there, mm-hmm. no matter how much you go further. Great. And so we, we've covered so many things, uh, the frame, the stem, the interface, the rare use of real damping in the suspension. Is there anything else that's unique about the, the Bernie that, uh, that we haven't covered? Uh, I think uh, uh, the carbon fiber mm. I choose is yeah. quite unique compared with other stuff. I was back from carbon fiber industry before I joined the electric scooter industry. Mm. I, will, I actually also speak Japanese. Oh. I was wo- I was working for a Japanese company. They have a factory in China building up the carbon fiber parts, like mm-hmm. the arm for the robot. So I have some relationship back in this industry. And uh, when I was doing the testing for the folding mechanism, the initial idea to using the sting as the aluminum pipes and machine the sting from aluminum pipes, mm-hmm. and uh, it actually breaks break the main, the front bearing shot uh, after a few thousands of the circle with quite intensive testings. And uh, I was talking with my friend back from the carbon fiber industry and uh, they support me very well. They give me the sample in very short time and uh, we start doing the testing on the machine. We start doing the test on the ride and uh, and it costs a lot more, but I go for it mm-hmm. because I think it's safer and uh, it does make the scooter quite unique. Having come from uh, you know with a carbon fiber background, did you did you give any thought to making an entire carbon fiber chassis for it? Yeah, we thought about that, mm-hmm. but it's kind of long process. Uh, I think it will take uh, quite a lot of time to testing the whole chassis. So 
we did not go that direction, but we go for the traditional direction of the bicycle frame or motorcycle frame when they make from the aluminum woldings. For this frame, it also take quite a lot of time to make it right. I tried very hard to develop the steering dampers. And uh, the reason for that is the back of the thing. I cannot make the frame like in perfect positions. As you might know that the motorcycle or electric scooter or any bikes, they have two wheels. The two wheels need to be in lines, particularly for the electric scooter because they have two power from both of the wheels. And uh, during the welding, the position of the head to change a little bit, maybe to the left, maybe to the right. And then we go to heat treatment, the position change again. And uh, we spend uh, quite a lot of time, like two months, to find, the, to find out the right way to make the frame in the perfect position uh, after welding, after heat treatment. And then I realized, okay, the damper uh, is not like a need, need, must need it. Then we are still developing the damper right now. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it will be ready in a short time for the people who really want to go fast. It's so funny, you know, people are anticipating the arrival of their scooters and, and many of them, before they even receive them, are already eyeing you know, various upgrades for them. One of the upgrades that people mention a lot is the idea of going to like a Magura brake or something like that. Uh, would you, uh, do you have any plans to offer an upgrade path for people who want to go that way, like maybe an adapter bracket or that sort of thing? The Magura can fit directly into the Nami frame, but I cannot get a stock because it can only produce like back from 2023. I've heard that Magura's had quite a backlog and definitely have been slowing down other folks that uh, were relying on them to get their product out. So uh, it makes sense that that wouldn't be a direction you'd want to go, especially on the, on the production end of things. Now, you've just you know, you've just launched the uh, the Burn Eve. Do you have plans for other models yes. to follow it? Yes. We are developing the new model. The design is about to be finished. Uh, I think uh, we could maybe start the production of the first prototype. We actually already seeing the machine few pieces, mm -hmm. few parts. This new model will be ready this year. Will it be a, a smaller scooter or about the same size? Or uh, Size is going to be about the same size. It's going to be a lot lighter. Mm -hmm. uh, we are trying to make it a lot lighter. And the power-wise, it's going to be a, a relatively less power-wise. And the same as the price point, it's going to be, of course, it will be less. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I think, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's pretty much covers all of my questions. Uh, we're really looking forward to testing the Burn E when we get our hands on it. And uh, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, thank you for having me. And looking forward for your test and uh, for your feedback. All right. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.